Real torture is to be despised as someone you love. Bargain or no bargain. Probably. The casting process for the 1932 movie was a fascinating journey. The film's director, Frank Capra, was known for his meticulous approach to casting. For the role of the general, Capra wanted an actor who could portray a character that was both powerful and vulnerable. He found his match in Nils Astor, a Swedish actor who had already made a name for himself in Hollywood. Astor's ability to convey complex emotions with just a glance made him the perfect fit for the role. The female lead, a young American woman, was played by Barbara Stanwyck. Capra was impressed by her audition, and her chemistry with Astor was undeniable. Despite her initial reservations about playing a character who falls in love with an Asian man, Stanwyck agreed to take on the role. The supporting cast was carefully selected as well. Toshia Mori, a Japanese-American actress, was chosen to play Ma Li, the general's concubine. Mori's performance added depth to the character, making her more than just a stereotypical concubine. Richard Liu, a Chinese-American actor, played the role of the general's right-hand man. Liu's portrayal of the character was nuanced, avoiding the common trope of the villainous Chinese character. The casting process for the film was a testament to Capra's commitment to creating a diverse and talented cast. Each actor brought their own unique perspective to their roles, contributing to the film's enduring appeal. The Bitter Tea of General Yen was directed by Frank Capra, who brought his unique vision to the production. Known for his innovative approach to filmmaking, Capra drew inspiration from various sources. He was influenced by the German Expressionist movement, which emphasized visual storytelling and symbolism, elements clearly present in the movie. Additionally, Capra incorporated elements of Asian culture into the film's aesthetic, reflecting its setting and themes. Capra's directional style leaned towards realism while maintaining a sense of optimism. His ability to balance drama and comedy became one of his signatures. To achieve this, he encouraged actors to improvise dialogue and actions, fostering a dynamic atmosphere on set. Collaboration was key to Capra's process. He worked closely with cinematographer Joseph Walker to create visually striking scenes that complemented the narrative. Collaborating with the cast was another crucial aspect of Capra's work. For instance, he guided Barbara Stanwyck, playing a missionary caught up in political intrigue, through her role. Their collaboration resulted in a nuanced performance that subverted audience expectations. Similarly, Capra worked with actor Nils Astor, who portrayed General Yen, helping him navigate the complexities of his character. Behind the cameras, Capra engaged actively with the crew, ensuring everyone understood the vision and contributed accordingly. From art director Steven Goosen and Lionel Banks creating the evocative sets to composer Hugo Friedhofer providing the fitting score, each member played a vital part in realizing Capra's vision for the movie. I think I've shaved. In 1932, a movie was released that still leaves an impression today. It's a story of love, power, and cultural clashes. There are many surprising and emotional moments that will make you laugh, gasp, and maybe even tear up. One scene that stands out is when the main characters share a quiet moment together. The way they communicate without words speaks volumes about their relationship. It's a powerful reminder that actions can speak louder than words. Do you have a favorite scene or memory associated with this movie? We'd love to hear about it in the comments below. Throughout the film, there are many twists and turns that will keep you engaged. From the shocking moments to the heartbreaking ones, this movie is a roller coaster of emotions. So, whether you're watching it for the first time or the tenth, there's always something new to discover. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. And don't forget to share your favorite moments with us in the comments below. Never mind that, with your provinces in the deal and you commanding, they'll get what they lack now. What is it? The Bitter Tea of General Yen, a 1932 film, was an early example of Hollywood's exploration of international settings and themes. Set in Shanghai, the production required significant efforts in set design and location scouting. The film's sets were built with meticulous attention to detail, reflecting the opulence of Chinese culture. The art department created lavish interiors, complete with intricate carvings, silk draperies, and delicate porcelain. The exterior sets, meanwhile, featured bustling streets and markets, capturing the vibrant atmosphere of a Chinese city. In addition to the sets, the production also utilized exterior locations. The film's opening sequence, for instance, was shot on the streets of Los Angeles, with Chinese-style buildings 
and decorations added to transform the city into Shanghai. Despite these efforts, the production faced several challenges. The film's subject matter, which touched on interracial romance and political intrigue, was considered daring for its time. As a result, the production had to navigate censorship restrictions and negative reactions from some audiences. The film also employed innovative techniques in its cinematography. Director Frank Capra and cinematographer Joseph Walker used a variety of camera angles and movements to create a sense of tension and drama. They also experimented with lighting, using shadows, and contrast to heighten the film's emotional impact. In terms of technology, the film was shot using an early form of color film known as Technicolor. This process required the use of three separate film negatives, each capturing a different color channel. The negatives were then combined in the printing process to create the final color image. Despite the challenges, the production of The Bitter Tea of General Yen was a significant achievement in early Hollywood filmmaking. The film's sets, locations, and cinematography helped to create a captivating and immersive viewing experience, one that continues to resonate with audiences today. Is she aware of your own flesh and blood? She is. We're all of one flesh and blood. The film, directed by Frank Capra, takes place in 1930s Shanghai and follows the story of an American missionary, Megan Davis, who falls in love with a Chinese warlord, General Yin. The movie is a testament to the cultural clashes and complexities of the time as Megan grapples with her feelings for Yen amidst political turmoil and cultural differences. Nominated for Best Picture at the 1933 Academy Awards, the film boasts impressive performances from its lead actors. Barbara Stanwyck, who plays Megan, delivers a nuanced portrayal of a strong-willed woman caught between her beliefs and her heart. Nils Astor, who plays General Yen, gives a powerful performance as a man torn between his love for Megan and his duties as a warlord. The film's cinematography is also noteworthy, with stunning shots of 1930s Shanghai and intricate details in the set design. The attention to detail in the film's production design, costumes, and props transports viewers to another time and place. Despite its critical acclaim, the film faced controversy upon its release due to its interracial romance and portrayal of Chinese culture. However, it remains an important piece of film history and a thought-provoking exploration of cultural differences and love. Overall, the film is a must-see for fans of classic cinema and those interested in cultural studies. Its complex characters, stunning cinematography, and thought-provoking themes make it a timeless piece of film history. What of orphans? Oh, it's great to be young. Oh dear, my wedding is all spoiled. In the early 1930s, musical scores were often created after the film was shot, allowing composers to watch the picture and craft fitting pieces. For this movie, renowned composer George Gershwin's assistant, Hugo Friedhofer, played a significant role in creating its evocative score alongside Columbia Studios music director, Konstantin Bakalinikov. Friedhofer drew inspiration from Chinese music, blending traditional instruments like Urs into his composition while incorporating Western classical styles. This fusion resulted in a unique soundscape that underscored the cultural clash seen on screen. He later recalled experimenting with various instrument combinations until achieving the desired effect, music enhancing both storyline and emotion without overwhelming them. Meanwhile, Bakalinikov conducted the studio orchestra during recording sessions held at Columbia's New York facility. His meticulous approach ensured each note aligned perfectly with the visuals, heightening dramatic moments and accentuating character interactions. One memorable scene involves an intense train ride where tension builds steadily between leads. Here, the score mirrors their growing unease through dissonant chords interspersed with silence, enhancing audience apprehension before culminating in a climactic resolution. Such careful manipulation of audio elements demonstrates how deeply integrated music becomes when expertly composed and implemented. Additionally, Meyer Davis, leader of one of America's most popular dance bands, contributed several tracks to the movie's soundtrack. These lively tunes contrast sharply with Friedhofer's haunting score, punctuating lighter scenes with upbeat rhythms reflective of mid-1930s pop culture. Despite these differences, all musical components work harmoniously together, contributing significantly to the overall impact of the film. And his wife. She isn't even allowed to sit on the same level with us. She may seem... In the movie, a notable figure is Barbara Stanwyck, who later starred in Cecil B. DeMille's Union Pacific and received the Cecil B. DeMille Award in 1986. 
she expressed her gratitude to DeMille, saying, I considered it a privilege to work for him. Barbara also took over the leading role in Ball of Fire after Ginger Rogers dropped out. Another actor in the film is Gavin Gordon, who had a British accent and often played refined upper crust characters. Interestingly, Barbara Stanwyck's role in the movie was initially intended for Ginger Rogers, but Rogers left the production, giving Stanwyck the opportunity to step in. This change showcases the dynamic nature of filmmaking and the importance of flexibility in the industry. Ridiculous pride and inhuman cruelty. You won't allow one single human feeling to reach you. You want me to be hostage for more? One of the most memorable scenes in the movie takes place in a snowy winter landscape. The general's car gets stuck in the snow, and he shares a moment of vulnerability with the missionary Megan. This scene showcases the director's ability to create tension and intimacy through visual storytelling. The cinematography is particularly striking in this scene. The use of wide shots to capture the vast, snowy landscape creates a sense of isolation and loneliness. Meanwhile, the close-ups of the characters' faces reveal their inner turmoil and growing attraction to each other. The performances in this scene are also noteworthy. Nils Astor, who plays the general, skillfully portrays a man torn between his desires and his duties. Barbara Stanwyck, who plays Megan, shows a surprising vulnerability and strength as she grapples with her own feelings for the general. According to the film's director, Frank Capra, this scene was intended to challenge audience expectations and subvert the typical white savior narrative. By showing the general as a complex and sympathetic character, Capra invites the audience to question their own assumptions and biases. Despite the film's age, this scene remains impactful and thought-provoking. It reminds us that people are not always what they seem, and that true understanding and empathy require us to look beyond surface-level stereotypes and assumptions. I advise you to send me back to Shanghai just as soon as you can. In the 1932 film, a leading lady, Barbara Stanwyck, delivered a remarkable performance that has left a lasting impression in the world of cinema. Stanwyck, often recognized as the best actress who never won an Oscar, has been the subject of various literary works, including Stephen Silverman's book Funny Ladies and the Scribner Encyclopedia of American Lives. Throughout her career, Stanwyck graced the silver screen with her undeniable talent, captivating audiences with her powerful and emotive performances. Despite never receiving an Academy Award, she has been highly regarded for her exceptional acting skills and versatility. Stanwyck's role in this particular film is a testament to her ability to bring depth and complexity to her characters, leaving a lasting impact on those who have seen her performances. Her work continues to resonate with audiences, even today, as a new generation discovers her talent and contributions to the world of film. Novels is a renegade, and a darn good one at that. <laughs> I don't think I'd be much of a relief. The 1932 movie, often referred to as The Bitter Tea of General Yen, stirred audiences with its unconventional narrative revolving around an interracial romance between a Chinese general and an American missionary. This theme was quite bold for its time, sparking conversations and challenging societal norms. Set against the backdrop of political turmoil in China, the film delved into complex issues like cultural clashes, imperialism, and religious conflicts. These topics resonated deeply with viewers, particularly during an era marked by increasing globalization and geopolitical shifts. Although the movie didn't necessarily influence popular culture directly, it certainly left an imprint on cinema history. Its daring portrayal of racial diversity and cross-cultural relationships paved the way for future productions to explore these subjects more openly. Moreover, the film contributed significantly to discourses surrounding identity politics and power dynamics, both within and across different cultures. By presenting a nuanced depiction of Chinese society through the lens of Western observers, it invited reflection on Orientalist perceptions and stereotypes prevalent during that period. Despite facing criticism for certain elements deemed insensitive or inaccurate today, one cannot dismiss the progressive nature of this early talkie. Its groundbreaking representation of interracial love and exploration of sociocultural intricacies make it a compelling piece of cinematic art worthy of analysis and appreciation even now, many decades after its release. Perhaps you believe us incapable of such moments. Yes. In 1939, William Holden's career took a turn for the better when he was cast in the lead role of Golden Boy, a decision influenced by Barbara Stanwyck. 
Holden himself acknowledged Stanwyck's support during his acceptance speech at the 50th Annual Academy Awards in 1978, leaving her nearly in tears and earning a standing ovation from the audience. The movie, based on a novel by Grace Zaring Stone, saw Stone and her family visiting the set one day. While she appreciated the realism of the set, Stone was not convinced by the casting, expressing her doubts about Stanwyck's suitability for the role of Megan. Later in her career, Stanwyck turned down the role of Angela Channing in Falcon Crest. Despite her decision, her impact on the industry remained significant, leaving a lasting impression on her colleagues and fans alike. What about China in four days? I certainly am. <laughs> Upon its release in 1932, the movie generated mixed reviews from critics, but it has since been recognized for its groundbreaking elements. Notably, Frank Nugent of the New York Times praised the film, commending its unusual story and Franklin Pangborn's performance. However, some reviewers criticized the interracial romance between the lead actors, Megan Grant and Nils Astor. Audiences were intrigued by the unconventional plotline, which revolved around themes of cultural clashes, and romantic entanglements against the backdrop of political upheaval in China. Some viewers appreciated the movie's boldness in tackling complex issues, while others felt uncomfortable with its depiction of racial dynamics. Despite the controversy, the movie was nominated for Best Picture at the Fifth Academy Awards. Although it did not win, the nomination underscored the significance of the film in American cinema during that era. Additionally, the movie marked a milestone as one of the earliest major Hollywood productions featuring Asian leads. These nominations and positive critiques have cemented the movie's status as a pioneering work in the early days of talkies. For those involved in the production, including director Frank Capra and lead actress Megan Grant, the recognition served as validation of their artistic vision and daring choices. Over time, the film has gained greater appreciation for its nuanced portrayal of cross-cultural relationships and exploration of societal norms. It's about sing song girls, huh? General, will you please give me that pass? Barbara Stanwyck, born Ruby Catherine Stevens, was a talented actress with a challenging upbringing. After her mother's death and her father's abandonment, she was raised by her sisters. In The Bitter Tea of General Yen, Stanwyck played a leading role although the character Miss Reed was actually played by Helen Jerome Eddy, not Jesse Perry as studio records suggest. Another actress in the film, Clara Blandick, had a heartbreaking end. Suffering from severe arthritis and impending blindness, she took her own life by overdosing on sleeping tablets and placing a plastic bag over her head. Her suicide note expressed her inability to endure the pain and face the prospect of blindness. Blandick's tragic end was a stark contrast to her successful career as a character actress in Hollywood. During the filming of this 1932 movie, many fascinating events unfolded behind the scenes. For instance, the leading actress, Barbara Stanwyck, was known for her courage and dedication. She insisted on performing her own stunts, which included hanging from a moving car during a dramatic chase scene. Her commitment added authenticity to her performance. Meanwhile, the director, Frank Capra, had a unique approach to evoking emotion from his actors. He would often play music on set, believing it helped create the right atmosphere. When shooting emotional scenes, he might choose a melancholic piece to set the tone. This unorthodox method proved effective, contributing to the film's powerful narrative. Nils Astor, who played General Yen, brought his own cultural background into the role. Being Swedish but fluent in several languages, including Chinese, he provided valuable insights into the character's nuances. His linguistic skills also allowed him to contribute to dialogue adjustments, enriching the film's multicultural aspect. Despite these positive aspects, the production was not without challenges. Racial prejudices of the time led to controversy over the interracial relationship depicted in the movie. Some critics even labeled it as promoting miscegenation. However, the boldness of addressing such a taboo topic made the film stand out among others released in the same period. Moreover, the visual effects team faced technical limitations. They had to manually create special effects like miniatures and matte paintings due to the lack of advanced technology. These efforts resulted in visually striking sequences despite the constraints they worked under. Overall, the making of this movie involved daring performances, innovative direction techniques, cross-cultural influences, societal controversies, and impressive manual craftsmanship, all combining to make an unforgettable cinematic experience.
Haven't got something new on the string, have you? I want to send a missionary back to Shanghai. In the early years of Hollywood, a rising star named Barbara Stanwyck caught the eye of her future husband, Frank Fay. The two were introduced through their mutual friend, Oscar Levant, and married in 1928. At the time, Stanwyck was a former chorus girl who had recently made her Broadway debut in burlesque, earning positive reviews. Later that year, the couple performed a dramatic sketch at the palace and were soon called to Hollywood for Faye's role in the film show of shows. The film in question, directed by Frank Capra, is known for its pre-code sensibility, particularly in the developing relationship between the two main characters. In one scene, Megan, played by Stanwyck, watches as Yen's concubine, Molly, tends to his needs, reclining in a submissive position that suggests a sexual invitation. Through eye contact alone, Capra effectively conveys Yen's preference for Megan, Molly's realization of her replacement, and Megan's fear and disgust. The production of the film was noteworthy for its use of Chinese antiques and art objects as set decorations. A total of 200,000 was spent on these items, with 7,000 going towards the acquisition of a bronze incense burner. The film's set design and attention to detail helped to create an immersive and authentic atmosphere for audiences. As I taught her to read and write, she's a constant menace, as long as she's alive. The Bitter Tea of General Yen, released in 1932, remains a significant film in Hollywood's pre-code era. Its groundbreaking representation of interracial relationships and unconventional characters set it apart from contemporary films. The movie, directed by Frank Capra, tells the story of a love affair between a Chinese general and an American missionary, a daring narrative for its time. This film's influence can be seen in the way it challenged racial stereotypes and norms. It was one of the earliest mainstream films to portray a Chinese character, not as a caricature, but as a complex, multidimensional figure. The film's depiction of General Yen, played by Nils Astor, was a departure from the typical portrayal of Asian men in American cinema. This progressive representation paved the way for more nuanced portrayals of Asian characters in future films. The bitter tea of General Yen also had an impact on the visual style of films. Capra's use of atmospheric lighting and innovative camera angles created a visually striking film that stood out from others of the era. This visual style can be seen influencing future film noir films and other movies that sought to create a unique visual aesthetic. The film's daring narrative and unconventional characters have inspired many subsequent works. The exploration of interracial relationships and the subversion of racial stereotypes can be seen in later films such as The Flower Drum Song and Joy Luck Club. The film's complex characters and nuanced storytelling have also influenced directors and writers seeking to create multidimensional characters and challenging narratives. In conclusion, the bitter tea of General Yen has left an indelible mark on film history. Its groundbreaking representation of interracial relationships, complex characters, and innovative visual style have influenced future filmmaking and inspired subsequent works. In the 1932 film, a notable figure in the acting world, Barbara Stanwyck, played a significant role. Stanwyck, known for her staunch Republican views, was associated with the Motion Picture Alliance for the Preservation of American Ideals during the McCarthy era. Alongside other prominent figures such as Ginger Rogers, Clark Gable, Gary Cooper, John G Wayne, and Irene Dunn. Interestingly, the role of Ma Lee was initially intended for Anna Mae Wong, but Toshia Mori was eventually cast in the part. Wong, an accomplished actress in her own right, played a similar role in the 1932 film Shanghai Express. The change in casting showcases the bustling landscape of Hollywood during that time, where roles and actors were often interchanged, creating a vibrant tapestry of talent and storytelling. Are we on a train? My troop train. Oh. I believe I'm... The movie, despite its grandeur, and the pedigree of the talented individuals behind it, received no Academy Award nominations. This is quite surprising, especially considering the masterful art direction that recreated the majestic palaces and teeming streets of the Chinese uprising. The film was one of Capra's few commercial failures, partly due to it being banned in Britain. The reasons for its ban are not explicitly stated, but it's worth noting that the movie was released during a time of political tension and cultural exchange between China and the West. Barbara Stanwyck, who played a significant role in the film, 
was often dubbed by Lydia Simoneschi in Italy. However, for her performance as Leona Stevenson in Sorry, Wrong Number, she was dubbed by Andrana Pagnani, which was a rare occurrence. Pagnani was known for her distinctive voice and had lent it to several other actresses in the Italian film industry. Did you know that the 1932 movie, The Bitter Tea of General Yen, was a groundbreaking film for its time? It dared to explore themes of interracial romance and cultural clashes, which was quite unusual for the era. I'm sure many of you have your own stories about how this movie affected you personally or influenced your perspective on cinema. Perhaps you were struck by the boldness of the film's subject matter, or maybe you were touched by the chemistry between the lead actors. Whatever your experience, it would be fascinating to hear your thoughts. Did this movie inspire you to explore more diverse films or stories? Or did it challenge your preconceptions about certain topics? Maybe you even found yourself reflecting on your own experiences and cultural background after watching it. Whatever your memories or insights, we'd love to hear them. Feel free to share your thoughts, experiences, and reactions to the film. And if you found this exploration interesting, be sure to like, share, and subscribe for more cinematic journeys. Where do you get this? Where do I get everything else around this dump? I paid a lot of money for it.